Peyton Thorne took starting reps yesterday. Does that mean he's the favorite to be the starter moving forward? Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked on Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked on Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining us on this Ferg Friday, Justin Ferguson of the Auburn Observer to react to what we saw as Auburn fall camp is underway. Actual football to talk about, kind of, but the biggest thing, Ferg, and we'll talk about the no dark West Hunter. We'll talk about players that caught our eye, but first things first, let's talk about Peyton Thorne was the first quarterback to take reps in the pace drill. He was lined up with starting center Avery Jones when we first walked over there when they were warming up, taking snaps. Everything we saw based on that 30-minute window, you know, he he's starting as the starter right now. Yeah, and it would have been not surprising at all to see um, Thorne with the twos or the threes. You know, yeah. Hugh Freeze said – before practice started that they were going to rotate those guys evenly the the three quarterbacks the three main quarterbacks no disrespect to Hank Brown although we did get to see him a little bit look uh, pretty good on too. Thursday yeah yeah I mean I they, they really I think he's a really good fit for what they what they want to do with this offense moving forward but yeah no the uh it would have been really easy to to put him second or third just because he's new you know and, and hasn't done this was his literally his first practice out there I mean uh, I'm sure we'll talk about him later on, but like Jair Shorter and Shane Hooks were on down Ooh. the uh, on down that list of the rotation. So it could have been it would have been very easy to do that. But yet Thorne's out there with the ones um, taking those first reps. It'll be interesting moving forward to see like if he continues to get more one reps because we saw some of that in the spring. Hey, we're going to rotate. Well, when we're out there, you know, c- certain guys are getting more reps with the ones than than, than the other. But you know, it, I, I think that's kind of a I don't know if it's a it's a Big signal, but I think it's a signal. It's like, hey, this guy's coming in to, you know, compete, and they think he's got what it takes to to win the starting job. And you know, why why ease him into it? Let's treat him like uh, like you want him to be treated when when you transferred in a guy that's got a legitimate shot to start this year, and, and you know, potentially the favorite. I'm 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 surprised that he was given the first reps. Among the Because it immediately becomes a story, right? Like, you know, you're just, yeah. it's, it's your lead topic on your podcast today. It'll yeah. be the, you know, it'll be, uh, we'll talk about it for sure on, on our podcast when we record a little bit later. So, yeah, I mean, it's. Incumbency is a big deal. I mean, sure. ev- even if Robbie wasn't expected, I mean, he's the incumbent right now. And mm-hmm. so that just really, really surprised me. For I thought it would take a few practices before they started showing us this and granted we get 30 minutes right we get yeah. th- there's no tell robbie could have been with the ones for the rest of the the session you know and, and i'm sure by the time this pod comes out maybe the reports of that will happen i don't know but uh the just the fact of like hugh freeze knew that this would be the biggest story like he knows what he's doing sure, yeah and so for him to say peyton you come on in you didn't get to practice in the spring like you may have questions about the playbook i don't know but you're gonna be the guy that we give the keys to first I, that's just it really surprised me, and it's really hard to not overreact to that. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 crucial because it could have easily been, hey, we're gonna put him in, we're gonna rotate, we see what we what he's got. He comes out there first, and first thing of the first practice that 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 gets your attention. That gets your attention. Now, I think ultimately, like like Freeze said on on Thursday, what's going to determine who um, becomes the starter is who makes the best decisions in practice, who's handling the playbook better, who the team rallies around. I thought that was a key thing that he said. Um, and honestly, those first couple of scrimmages, uh, you know, of, of camp on the, not this Saturday, but the next two Saturdays after that, I think that's going to be kind of the real, Hey, we're going to, we're going to have some separation. We'll have some determining factors here, but they brought in Peyton Thorne to give him a shot to, to, to start. Yeah. And, and we've talked about it all summer long. I mean, the track record of Hugh freeze is if he's got a transfer. He usually leans with the transfer. And so they're not, they're not shying away from that early on in camp, which I, I think is good and smart and, Pretty transparent, which is always good for for our business. Biggest, su- bigger surprise, Peyton's with the ones, or Robbie with the threes, based on what we saw. Yeah, and Holden Karen, or uh, I mean, threw a dime. We talked about her before we hit record. Threw an absolute dime to Caleb Burton downfield. Had it. Um, had another good throw that you, that w- that we were talking about as well. It was Javarius, I believe. I yeah. might have been over by the defense by that point, but um, 
He has yeah, like a no. flag route, which is a hard a hard ball to throw. Yeah, he's got great arm talent. I mean, you could talk mm-hmm. about last year as a true freshman. Like everybody's talking about, yeah, this dude can throw the ball. It's and he's got a matter. mustache now. Oh, well, there you go. That's 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 a really important important thing. That'll that'll no help doubt. him in his in his battle. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I'm I'm curious because of Robbie, there's the thing with Robbie is that we all know what he can do running the ball, and and I hate to. I hate to distill a quarterback um, into just, Hey, he's a dual threat. Um, But you know, the thing with Robbie is that he was such a good runner last season and last season just, you know, had his moments throwing the ball, but nowhere near consistent enough. And when you hear freeze in Nashville say, Hey, we can win games with Robbie Astrid. And when you hear him today saying, well, we think we can win with multiple of these quarterbacks. I don't know if that necessarily means it has to be straight up. Robbie Astrid is QB one for that to happen. Yeah. And so working him third, you know, I, I, I still think I would be very surprised. I would be very surprised if Robbie Ashford isn't the starter this season. I would be very surprised if he just doesn't factor in at all. Cause I think there's, there's too much value there. You don't want to be predictable, but you still want to be able to, you know, you get him out there and use him. And, and freeze today sounded a lot more open to that. Um, than you know, he probably had been in the past. And once again, we don't want to overreact to you know this 30-minute window that was primarily stretching and then a pace drill, Ferg. But when it was Peyton's turn with the offense, they threw it. When it was Holden's turn with the offense, they threw it. When it was Robbie's turn, it's a lot of runs. Mm-hmm. And then when it was Hank Brown, the baby goat's turn, you know, it, he, he threw it and had a couple of really solid passes. So, I mean, it, you got to ask the question, like, are they trying to get him used to that feel of that's the kind of style that he's going to have to run when he's in. I don't know. I don't want to overreact once again to what we saw, but I mean, it's hard not, it's so glaring and so drastic to kind of what we expected a little bit where it's like, okay, maybe this does mean something. Yeah. And and I think the thing with Robbie is that he's had some, you know, last season, I think back to that third of Javarius and the iron bowl, uh, some of the plays he made, he can throw the ball and you don't want to have a situation where you put the dude out there and everybody in the building knows that, it's going to be a run. Um, so you still want to be able to use him as a passer for sure. But if you're running certain packages where all this stuff's kind of based off the RPO, a lot of zone read stuff, um, you know, getting him in that rhythm and that flow is, is pretty good because, you know, take a, take a normal play and RPO usually has three different reads, you know, or three different options you can go with. Um, Robbie, you know, you maximize that with Robbie. And I'll also say, as we saw last season in November, even though it, on the plays, you know, there's only two options, handoff or keep, he uh-huh. can still be pretty dang effective. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, he, he needs he needs to get some reps for sure, I think. And I wanted to see him throw it more yesterday. I'm sad that we weren't able to. I'm sure that time will come. We get open window today on Friday as mm-hmm. well as some player interviews. So, you'll see some stuff coming out throughout the day, hopefully. Um, but, but all in all, I mean, I, I think that was the – the biggest thing to me yeah. was the quarterback hierarchy. We'll see. We'll see if it stays in that order or if they move things around over the course of the next few weeks. But some might say the biggest storyline was no Jarquez Hunter. What does that mean for Auburn? What does it mean for Jarquez? What does it mean for the running back room? I think everything's going to be fine. We discuss in just a moment right here on Locked On Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Auburn Med Aesthetics. Guys, we've all been there. It's the day before, even the day of your anniversary or her birthday, and you need the perfect gift. Well, the solution is just go to auburnmedaesthetics.com and get her a gift card for their Botox, facials, or laser treatments and help your wife, girlfriend, significant other feel incredible. I mean, how many times have we heard the question, how do I look? Well, they want to feel and look their best, and that's what Auburn Med Aesthetics is going to help you do. Your wife will love it. They've got 15 years of experience in the med spa industry. If you just have a bunch of questions and say, guys, I I just need help. I've waited the last minute. Can you help me out? They will bail you out. So head over, uh, guys, your wife, girlfriend, mother, sister, anyone who will want to impress, give the love of a gift card to Auburn Med Aesthetics, and also... They have some Brotox or facials that could be in play for you as well. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. This time of year, it seems like everything can be a high stakes wager for your small business when you look at hiring the best candidates and you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. 
That's why you've got to check out our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. They help you find the right people for your team faster and most importantly, for free. All you have to do is head over to linkedin.com slash locked on college and they can help you find those qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Once again, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Justin Ferguson of the Auburn Observer, our guest today. I think everybody walked out. They saw where Peyton Thorne was and they looked at the running backs and they're like, where is number 27? And he was not out there. But boy, did Damari and Jeremiah and Brian Batty, boy, they all look good, I think. But the first things first, we got to talk about Jarquez Hunter not being there. There could be a multiple number of reasons why he's not there. Um, but the bottom line is, you know, there's been some controversy about is he with the team? He was on the roster that they handed us. Yep. So you got to think uh, you got to think it's going to be OK when it's all said and done. Yeah, the fact that he keeps training this offseason, we know right. that uh, Brad Lester has been, um, you know, uh, working with him. And that's a you know, it's a really good sign for his available availability during the season. Yeah. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he's able to come back in fall camp, what that looks like, you know, kind of what that situation uh, entails. And 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 Hugh Freeze is, has been pretty adamant since the very beginning, just not commenting on it. And I don't think you're going to get any clarity officially from Auburn in terms of any sort of statement or anything like that until maybe you just see him out there again. Uh, but, you know, it'll be interesting to see where Auburn kind of, you know, w- when that may happen and, and, and what that looks like. Because um, I think, like you said, the fact that he was still on the roster today and that they, that they haven't kind of shied away from, you know, um, not talking about him completely, you know, I guess when you look at the future and the, and the running back room, um, mm-hmm. it's not like, it's not like, you know, people are talking about it, like assuming that he's gone, you know, or anything like that. So I, you know, we'll see, we will see, uh, what it, what it ends up being, but yeah, no, no hunter out there on the first day. And that'll definitely be something whenever we get to go out there that people are going to keep their eyes on. Stop me. If you think I made a little too confident here, but, I don't think it's a big deal for Hunter as far as an execution standpoint if he mm-hmm. does miss a oh, yeah. week or two. Yeah. I mean, no. he, he knows what he knows what to do. I mean, th- that's not the problem. It's just is he going to be available to do it? Yeah, and the thing is is, you know, running back is the most plug and play position on the roster. And I don't want to say Sure. It's, you know, you can roll in there and, and do and do it, you know, automatically, but it is a, a group where, you know, guys start earlier or get in the rotation earlier and and I think it takes the least amount of time to be able to just jump in and be ready to go. A lot of running back uh, is you either got it or you don't. And and you can get better moving moving forward. It's something I've talked to Cadillac Williams about in the past. And I remember him saying, it's like, I can't really teach anybody how to be a better running back. I can't teach you how to be a running back. You got it. I can help you. But it's like that. It, it's such a plug and play position that we talk about that all the time with the young guys. And obviously Auburn's got a, a couple of them that I think could be in line for, for some big roles this year. I think we can also talk about it when guys are, are gone. Or let's, for example, a guy like Brian Batie, if he's not able to go 100% this this fall uh, in, in camp because of that that foot surgery that he had, I think you're still fine because he's got a lot of experience and like he knows what to do, kind of like what we yeah. what you just said about Jarquez. Right. I mean, I thought Damari and Cobb looked great. Cobb looked they a looked- lot bitter, bigger than he was listed. That was one of the first things that popped uh-huh. out to me. I mean, he looked kind of Jark West size out there. He's listed significantly smaller than him in terms of weight, but I wouldn't be surprised if that playing weight's going to be around 200. I mean, he just well, looks bigger than than advertised. I kept getting Damari and Cobb mixed up when they mm-hmm. were in. I thought they looked pretty similar, too, and I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, and, and I really, I really like both of those guys, Jarquez as well, and, and Bati. But you look at Demari Alston, and you look at um, Jeremiah Cobb, and it goes back to what I just said: you either got it or you don't. These two were top ten running backs in their respective classes. Uh, Cadillac Williams has done an excellent job of recruiting, retaining, developing, and sending talent at the running back position to the next level. Yeah, and and you look at Fat Burnett and like other guys that they're trying to line up for the future. It's like. The the cycle keeps going, so you you should have a lot of faith if you're an Auburn fan in your depth at running back. And I yeah, Tabari looked great. F- uh, Freeze saying that he's been one of the better leaders on a team. Come on, yeah, that that that's a sophomore. That's this is his second year of college football, uh, and, and people are already talking about him like that. I think that's huge. And then Cobb, I mean, go back and look at his numbers at Montgomery Catholic. Just absolutely stupid numbers. It's and stupid. I think the yeah. and I think the other thing with Cobb that I like a lot for for this year. He was a really valuable pass catcher 
uh, a Catholic. Like they split him out wide sometimes. Did something there that can get you on the field early, uh, even yeah. if you're not one of the guys or maybe one of the top two guys. Especially if Batty's part of it or that foot continues to give him problems, there's a role that you could do there for oh, sure. For sure, yeah. Um, yeah, and he casually Hugh Freeze casually dropped that when he was asked about the running back room. I mm-hmm. think it was, uh, I think it was Dan Peck that asked the yes. question about like the the running back room. If Jarquez can't go, mm-hmm. you can hear Dan Peck on the Auburn Observer podcast. But there you go. Uh, yeah, and he just casually dropped. You know, Damari Austin's been one of the leaders of this team, and it's like. Huh. Second year guy, man. Like, and, and that's Damari, though, right? This is the dude who was recruiting for Auburn all the way through his recruiting. Like, he's one of their top recruiters now, I would say. Well, it sounds uh, like for a while he was Auburn's only recruiter when he was in high school. <laughs> yeah, he did a better job than some of the some of the staff that's members. Probably true, but yeah. yeah so I, I thought that was impressive. And hats yeah, off to, to Damari for that. I think he's in I, for a good good role this year. No I hope matter, so. No matter what happens with Jarquez, or and I think Batty. I think Bat Two can give you some more between the tackle stuff than people give him credit for, but like That's you true. know, it's that role. It's that role that is just so up in the air, and I still think Demar is going to be a guy that can break out. We usually see a young running back each year for Auburn kind of break out. There's been a good streak of them for a while. Mm-hmm. Demar makes a ton of sense, and Cobb makes a lot of sense too. Yep. The offensive line was pretty much what we thought it would be from left to right: Dylan Wade, Tate Johnson, Avery Jones, Cam Stutz, Gunner Britton. The backup offensive line, I think, is interesting. Just Garner Langlow, who is a massive human being. Huge. At left tackle. Jeremiah Wright at left guard. He's got a chance to be the starting left guard when it's all said and done. That's probably the only actual battle that's happening on the offensive line anymore. I want your thoughts on that in a second. Connor Lewis, center. Right guard, Jaden Muskrat. There was some conversation like where he played Tulsa. At Tulsa, he played a lot of tackle. Where would he play at Auburn? Got him at right guard. And then at yeah. right tackle, Xavier Miller, which is what we saw in spring. So do you think there's any more battles other than the left guard battle on this offensive line? Yeah, you could also put right guard in there. I think there's four. I think of the four guards, you could put any combination out there and and it would make sense. Um, The fact that it's Tate and Cam to start again, that's not surprising to me because those are the guys that, you know, Tate had a great spring until he was hurt. Cam was, you know, sent to SEC media days and had a good spring. Right. Uh, Jeremiah, a guy who was not uh, fully healthy in the spring, so it might take a little while. And Muskrat just got here, um, so mm-hmm. you know I think that's just you could put you could give me any combination of those four guys at guard uh, this uh, for game one as the starters, and I wouldn't be surprised by any of them. I, okay. I really think all of them have a, have a pretty good shot because they all bring something different to the table. Uh, but we, we'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if. Um, if we come out there Friday or sometime next week and you've got two different guards or, you know, some, a different look with that first team, but yeah, left tackle, right tackle center, barring injury. You, you have, you've had those guys pretty much locked in from your first week of spring. Yeah. The other starting members of this offense at wide receiver, Camden Brown, Jay fair, Nick Mardner. And then the next time the first team offense came out, I believe it was Malcolm Johnson, jr. Caleb Burton and Jair shorter. If I recall, uh, in a rotation, yeah, in a rotation at that group, um, there was the first receivers worked with the fourth quarterback at one point. Like, you know, they're yeah. they're just going to try to find who can. It, it's going to be so mix and match there. But hey, good for Jay Fair, man. Um, you know, had a great yeah. spring, and you know, I think getting rewarded, but with a little bit of a bump up the up the depth chart, especially as guys like Shane Hooks and Jair Shorter, you know, get get more used to this offense. Yeah, that Rivaldo Fairweather, of course, the starter there, and then. One other thing that I saw, and I spent a whole uh, uh, lot Mike, of Mike, Mike O'Reilly with the second team on the uh, tight end. Thought that was really. Do you think that's because he's so similar to Rivaldo Fairweather, and they just wanted a specific kind of thing, or do you think he? They just, moved him around a lot. He played yeah. some H back in there and some tight. I like I like Micah's potential. No disrespect to Luke Deal, Tyler Fromm, Brandon Fraser. Those are guys that I you know uh, all different really type good of players player. play role. Yeah, Micah, Micah is the best probably two way prospect, in, and by two way I mean receiver and blocker that mm-hmm. they've got it's just you need some experience with him but he's he's the biggest tight end in the room not named brandon frazier and uh i thought i thought he looked more i thought he looked quicker out there i mean i thought when he was running through his cuts and stuff like that again small sample size but i, mm-hmm. I thought he's taking that next step and that's something that that luke deal uh told us when he was in nashville and then we also saw brandon frazier with the ones when they were going for their second time and he looked really good i mean he's yeah. a big boy but it seems like he's thicked up a little bit which is great um, it's but about offensive tackle size out there running, running routes. And that's, he, uh, that, I mean, that's he's helpful. His body, like from when he got here, I mean, he used to just be like really tall and skinny. Now he's yeah. just like 
That is a huge was, human being. There was talk under the previous staff of moving him to offensive tackle because they thought they could that. bulk him up to get to that point. He they never did that, and I think he I think he held firm about wanting to be a tight end. And and but yeah, I mean, like I said, that's that about all, an offensive tackle sized dude running routes for you. That's you'll, help, you'll you can take that 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 can be that can be very effective in certain situations. Yeah, and you know, in this age of college football where the transfer portal's so big, like props to the guys like Brendan Frazier who stay true and just kind of like being where they're at. I think a lot of dudes in that tight end room did that. I think that's cool. Yeah. And then one other note, like I didn't spend a whole lot of time on the defensive side just because it seemed like they were doing more stretching than the offense was. A lot was. of rotation in that group too. I tried to write down, I had like this weird second and third team defense hybrid for a while. I, yeah. Wasn't yeah, the they, easiest in the world. No, like the starting defensive line that I saw was in the interior was Jason Jones and Marcus Harris. Mm -hmm. And then they had um, Mosiah Nasili Kite, a defensive end starting, and then Elijah McAllister at Jack. And then they quickly rotated in Justin Rogers and Lawrence Johnson on the interior. So I thought yep. that was an interesting note. And then next to Austin Keys, they had Cam Riley, which yep. I would not have guessed going into it, but worth noting. Yeah, the other linebacker group had Asante and uh, and and Robert Woodyard out there. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of mixing and matching for sure um, over there. Uh, there was on the when I I was closer over to the second and third team or whatever that what are we calling it the whatever second it defense. Was. Yeah, yeah. There were some things they were going through where like the corners and the DBs were like running the same thing at the same. Like so, it'd be like two corners learning the same thing, right? Like there was a one time it was JD Rim and Tyler Scott together and they both like just lined up next to each other and did the walkthrough, like, you mm -hmm. know, went ahead and repped at the same time. Cause I think they were just trying to get as many, many dudes in there as possible. And so a lot of rotation. And I think the that's going to be, thing. that's going to be, that's going to be kind of the, the MO of this defense. I think this year, they want to use that depth, which is something the last staff did not do. There were a few guys that really stood out to me, Ferg. I'm sure there's a few guys that stood out to you as well. Let's discuss who those guys are in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors for a championship team. It's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your type of car to your garage on eBay and it will pop up with a little green check mark. If it's confirmed, it'll fit your car. And of course, if it doesn't, you get that money back. Cause just like in sports confidence is the name of the game. When you shop at eBay motors, they've got over 122 million parts to choose from. Trust me. I counted them. I counted them by hand a few nights ago. I'm joking, but they've got a ton. Get the right parts, the right fit and the right prices at ebaymotors.com, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, and exclusions apply. Auburn family, let's ride. Justin Ferguson, our guest with the Auburn Observer. Final few minutes here. The guy that impressed me the most, just physically just staring at him, was Jair Shorter. I mm -hmm. couldn't get enough of just like, man, this guy's supposed to be this speedster, this big play guy. He's not supposed to be that big. But man, uh, both him and Shane Hooks, to me, the transfer wide receivers, they just looked, they looked like the part to me. They looked like number one SEC wide receivers when you just look at their physique, their body, the way they carry themselves. Yeah, they definitely have the size and length, and that's something that, you know, Hugh Freeze talked about when, why they went out and got it. Because outside of Cameron Brown and Nick Martyr, they don't have a ton yeah. of size at that at that position so bringing them in made a ton of sense uh they looked the part for sure uh hooks hooks is uh, as well but yeah shorter and hooks both looking really really good was impressed with caleb burton just uh, i mean yeah. as advertised when you know, you know when you get somebody like him uh, a lot of speed a lot of great route running very pure with his with his cuts um and well and when uh, caleb announced that he was coming here it was kind of dubbed as like okay this is for the future but i don't think that's true I anymore. Th i think he can definitely get into the mix pretty early uh i think when you look at like a traditional slot receiver i think it's i think javarius and caleb you know th those are two really good weapons to build around and then you can mix and match with a lot of other guys on this room. But yeah, the length that you bring to the table with shorter and hooks, very much needed, very much needed. And uh, good to see Cameron Brown up there, you know, healthy. And, and, you know, I think if he gets a fully healthy fall, uh, he could be in line for a big season. Is there anybody that you saw that you got out there? You're like, Oh my goodness, this person looks great. 
Lawrence Johnson's a monster, man. Lawrence, okay. That was one of the things I saw all over by the by, by the defense. Again, you know, they're just doing walkthroughs and stuff like that, but big. Sure. Thought, thought Mo Nasilakite looked bigger than he did in the spring. Um, he had a great spring. Uh, obviously, could be a could be a, a really uh, out of all those guys that Auburn got out of the portal on the defensive line, he's got the most uh, production as a, as getting into the backfield uh, and making plays type of dude. So, uh, Lawrence Johnson and Celikite, they did look bigger uh, to me. I, I mean, Lawrence Johnson's already already a, a massive guy, but um, yeah, I really thought that uh, that I really thought that uh, Nasilakite was. Uh, the one that stood out to me on that side of the ball that it was just like, oh, wow, he looks uh, a lot bigger. And then, you know, uh, I think I was talking with somebody while we were out at practice and we were over by the defense and they mentioned, like, I think Auburn fans are going to quickly remember how good J.D. Rim was last season at the end of the year yeah. because he didn't get to go in the spring and that, and that you know, he kind of fell off the radar a little bit. A lot of K.N. and Lehigh, which I think, you know, you'll definitely use. Um, but, you know, uh, JD Ram, if he can get back to what he was at the end of last last fall, uh, at the end of last season, I mean that's a really big weapon to have at corner. And uh, I thought thought he was moving around pretty well out there for a guy that you know missed missed a lot of time in the spring. Yeah, and then another one, and he comes on my show a good bit. But Hank Brown, I I think he's been dismissed because there's so much energy about Walker White coming in, and I oh, get yeah, it, yeah, but. Yeah. But I mean, Hank is six four. Like he's all of six four. I mean, that is a big kid. And if he can gain, you know, ten or fifteen pounds over the next few years before it's his time to really compete for a job, like I just don't think we should ride him out. No, no, not at all. And I and I think depth at quarterback's always a good thing. Say, say, let's say, you know, Walker White says advertised, Peyton Thorne could be a guy, sure. or Robbie Ashford's a guy who could play here for a couple more years. Might be a little while before you see Brown. Even still, you can never have enough depth because it just takes an injury. I mean, those guys are one heartbeat away. You want to be set. You want to be able to have that depth as long as you can carry it, especially in the transfer portal era, yeah. knowing that quarterbacks like to move uh, and bounce pretty quickly. But, yeah, Hank Brown, this is a dude who's going to go to Liberty. Liberty. They thought they had a diamond in the rough there with him, able to get him to go to Auburn. Um, you know, th this staff, especially the head coach, saw something in him, and I think that's a really good sign for him. It's just a matter of, of developing and – but yeah, look, does not look, you know, like a doesn't look like a true freshman that um, no, he, isn't, he got isn't out ready there. to play here. Yeah, and he was yelling the checks like with confidence, like good for him, good for him. He yeah. he passed the eye test for me as well. So a lot of, I mean, it just seems like Auburn's receivers they just look bigger. The offensive mm -hmm. line looks more like an offensive line. I mean, the eye test, which is really all we have to go on right now. Right, they passed. They passed. They won. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and, and and you know we talked about some of these other guys, so Jeremiah Cobb, uh, Demario Alston. Mm -hmm. Got to mention them again. I thought they thought they looked really good at the, in that running back room. Ferg, how can people check out everything you've got going on? Your coverage of fall camp is awesome, and y'all y'all just had an anniversary at the Observer, right? Yeah, we're coming up on uh, we're going to start year four here, and awesome. uh, and yeah, this is the perfect time to sign up because all throughout fall camp, from now until the start of the season, uh, we are doing a deal where you can get the Observer since it's year four for either $4 a month instead of the normal six, or you can go ahead and give me $40 and you can get a full year. Um, so that's, that's the special we're running right now for new subscribers. So if you've been on the fence, this is a perfect time to do it because like today, um, or I'll say, let's say Thursday, this comes out on Friday. Uh, on, on Thursday, uh, I had, uh, over 2000 words on, um, Auburn's, you know, practice. I had those out to subscribers inboxes, you know, right about 11 o'clock today. So, I mean, that's, We'll have some more of that on Friday. Um, yeah, so I, I was driving home from the facility, and I got your email. So, yeah. I mean, you did, you did it pretty quick. I appreciate that. But, yeah, this is we're, we take advantage of it. The, the schedule's a little different. So these, these morning practices are going to make it easier for us to get stuff out quicker. Yeah. Um, so we've got that podcast as well. By the time you're listening to this, we've got a podcast out uh, from day where me and Painter and Dan talk about all things uh, day one of practice. So we got a ton of stuff happening. AuburnObserver.com. Sign up there. Perfect time to sign up. This is our best deal we, we're running. And we're doing that all throughout fall camp. So whenever you're ready, uh, we can we can save you a few bucks. Yep, hop on and it's worth it, folks. Be sure to check out all of my content at auburndaily.com and follow me on socials at Z Blackerby. We will see you, I guess, later today, recapping more camp action. Until then, this has been Locked On Auburn.